Hello, physics students. So in the last two videos, we studied simple circuits that were just a single loop, uh, in one case, of a battery, a switch, a resistor, and an initially uncharged capacitor. And then in another case, a single loop of a charged capacitor, a switch, and a resistor. And the goal throughout was to find the charge on the capacitor and the current in the circuit for all time. From the moment that switch makes contact, moment, 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 we wanted to know a function for the current and charge up until infinite time. So uh, that was the goal. We, we wrote down the formulas in the first video and then I derived them in the second video. What we're going to do today is we're going to move on to circuits that are more complicated where there are multiple loops in the circuit, combination circuits. And so uh, instead of analyzing them the way we did in the first two videos that we just completed about our, our resistor capacitor circuits, we're just going to look and analyze what's happening in the circuit the moment the switch makes contact, and then we'll skip the in-between and figure out what's happening in the circuit after a long time. And the reason why is to write differential equations for these combination circuits and write uh, current and charge expressions is uh, too difficult to fit in this course, so it's not part of the curriculum. So we're just going to analyze what happens at the beginning, what happens in the end. So this is um, uh, what you need to know to help you analyze that. So first thing I want to mention is uh, this term RC circuits. I didn't mention the last two videos. It's just a quick way to uh, uh, say resistor capacitor circuits. You'll see that in books or courses all the time, RC circuits. Uh, and then there are other kinds of circuits we'll get to later in the year. So the thing you need to know about the moment the switch comes down, T equals zero, which they say with words, they'll say initially, or they'll say at time zero. Either way, they'll refer to this moment when the switch first comes down, the charge on the capacitor is zero, and therefore it has no voltage across it. That means charge can easily, freely go into the capacitor and without any resistance. So we could say that if you thought of it as a resistor, think of it as a resistor of resistance zero. The capacitor essentially acts like a wire at that moment, just when the switch flips down. It evolves in time, and there are things that happen in between. We skip over that. Then we next analyze what happens when time approaches infinity. Again, the same term about infinity being a relative term. For a particular circuit, an infinite amount of time could be a millionth of a second. And for that circuit, it's reached its final value. That's infinity. Uh, and so uh, in, in words, they often refer to this after a long time. So you'll see what is the current in this resistor after a long time. That means when the circuit reaches final value. What happens is the capacitor is full. It reaches its charge, final charge. And so the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the voltage of anything it's in parallel with. And at that moment, it blocks all current. So we could think of it as being an infinite resistance resistor blocking the current. So let's take a look at how we analyze a circuit. Uh, oh, by the way, let me create a pause to allow you to copy this down. All right, let's do one example. So here's our circuit. We've got our voltage source switch, and then we've got a one ohm resistor, four, 12, and then the capacitor over here. What we want to do is determine all the initial currents in the beginning, all the final currents when the capacitor is full, and then the final charge on the capacitor. So let me give, me give you a moment to copy this example down. Okay, so uh, the first thing we do is we redraw the circuit and in, in the beginning, the capacitor acts like a wire over here. So this is what the circuit looks like and behaves to the battery at the moment the switch comes down. And so we just do a simple um, combination circuit analysis. We look and see what part of the circuit is in either series or parallel. The place we start is with the four and the 12 ohm, they are in parallel. So we use the parallel resistor rule, the reciprocal one over one over to the negative one power. The one over four, one over 12, we can make this common denominator three over 12, add together we get four over 12, flipped over is 12 over four, which gives us three ohms. So I redraw this circuit, and now it looks like this to the battery, a one ohm and a three ohm over here. So I could find the current coming out of the battery by just doing V over R ohm's law, oops, not R equivalent, 
mistake there. Where's, here we go. All right. I. Ohm's law, I equals V over R. Volts over the total resistance these in series gives me three amps. Now what I think about, okay, I'm looking for the current in all the resistors, right? So that's coming out of the battery. And if you go look at the original picture, all the current coming out of the battery has to go through that one ohm. So that's the R1 initial is three amps. Now I need to find these two. The current splits up. Maybe it's one and a half, one and a half, or maybe one goes more than the other. We need to find that. So what I'm gonna do is like a simple uh, combination circuit, I'm gonna find the voltage from here to here. A to B. Okay. Okay, so if you need a moment, I'll create a pause to allow you to copy this down. Okay, so uh, the voltage from A to B we could find by IR. And so what we have is 3 amps and the resistance from A to B is 3 ohms. So that's 9 volts. All right, so now if I go back to uh, this diagram over here, A and B are over here. So uh, that's essentially the voltage on, for both of those. So I could use that to find the current in the 4 ohm. Oops, V, not. Not VI. And when you divide that, you give 2.25 amps. And I also want to find the current in the 12 ohm because it said find all initial currents. So the 12 ohm, same thing. We've got nine volts over here over the 12 ohm resistor. So we can say the I 12 initial equals V over R. Of course, I didn't need to do Ohm's law. I could have just subtracted from three, right? We got three coming in here, and then we got 2.25 here while the risk rest goes over there. So a different way I could have calculated it. So there is part A. Now, I also want to mention something before I move on to part B. Um, if this was like this, okay, no resistor there, the initial current would just be Basically, this one resistor would be bypassed completely by the capacitor. And so the current would just be 12 over 1 ohm or 12 amps in the beginning. So that's what a capacitor could also do. It could make the current in that beginning moment completely skip a resistor because it won't go through the resistance if it can go this way with no resistance. So that's another thing that you might see in a circuit where it completely bypasses. All right, so just I wanted to mention that before I start erasing. Okay, so uh, if you need a moment, I'll create a pause to allow you to copy this down. All right, let's move on to part B, all the final currents. So maybe what I'll do is I'll keep this intact and I'll just go over there for part B. Okay.
final means after a long time is elapsed. So now what I erased over here is after a long time, the capacitor is full. It will not take any more current. It blocks all the current in this whole branch. So our entire circuit will look like this. And the capacitor branch is over here, saturated, and so it doesn't even, like, it's like the battery doesn't even know it's there because no current's going through it. So to the battery, it looks like this after a long time has elapsed. So we could find the current in this circuit coming out of the battery just using Ohm's law. And we've got 12 volts and one ohm plus four ohms gives us 5 ohms, so what we get is 2.4 amps. That's coming out of the battery, okay? Now, if you look at the picture, that's the current in the 1 ohm, and that's the current in the 4 ohm, because it's just a simple series circuit. So we could say I, uh, 1 final, equals 2.4 amps. And I four final equals 2.4 amps. And I um, 12 final equals zero amps. Okay. All right, so. The last thing, the charge on the capacitor. Now what a lot of people will do, and maybe I'll erase over here to make room. A lot of people will make this mistake. So don't write this down because it's gonna be incorrect. Oh, I know how to do this. C equals Q over V, they say. Okay, it's a five microfarad capacitor, there's a charge uh, that we're looking for, and the voltage is, well, it's 12 volts, right? And so many, more than half seems to do this in, when, if this were on the test. Not the case. The 12 volts is over here. The one side of 12 is here. The other side of 12 is here. The capacitor doesn't have both sides of 12. It only gets a part of 12. So don't just do that. What you have to do is you have to calculate the voltage that the capacitor receives. In other words, the voltage from here to here. I guess I could use A and B again, why not? So the way I can find the voltage from A to B is from Ohm's law again. And the current from A to B is right here, 2.4 ohms. The resistance from A to B is 4 ohms. And so that is 9.6 volts. Not 12, 9.6 volts. Okay. Now, that is the voltage from here to here, okay? Now, is that the voltage on the capacitor? It actually is, because remember, the current here is zero. So these two volts, since they're in series, add up to this 9.6 volts. But with V equals IR, I of zero amps times 12 ohms tells me there's zero volts here so if there's 9.6 here and zero there, there must be all the 9.6 on that capacitor. So that's what I put into C equals Q over V. So I could say uh, five microfarads, charge 9.6 volts, Q, 
48, I believe it is, microcoulombs. There it is. All right. So let me create a pause to allow you to copy that down. All right. The last thing that I want to do is uh, say that sometimes you're not responsible for calculating the actual amps at any moment between these two values. But you may be responsible for creating a graph that shows the pattern. You still have to kind of, you know, estimate the pattern. So like the one ohm resistor starts at, oh, I erased it. It was um, uh, I1 initial was, when well, I think I have it here somewhere, hopefully, 3 amps. All right, you have it in your notes, so 3 amps, and then I1 final goes to 2.4 amps. And you can see that I4 goes from 2.25 to 2.4, and 12 goes from 0.75 to 0. So you might have to graph these trends Try and create a nice big y axis. One, two, three. I in amps. So let's say, I guess I could use colors. I1 goes from three amps to 2.4 amps. So 2.4, well, here's 2.5, right? So 2.4 is going to be right around here. I'll just do a dotted line like this. And maybe I'll even put that here, 2.4. So the first resistor, I1, goes from 3 to 2.4. And as we saw from the last two videos, it's going to be an ex exponential sort of decay. And the 4 ohm resistor, it started at 2.25. Well, it's going to be a little bit tricky to draw. 2.25 would be like right here. And then it goes to 2.4. So it'll be like a rising exponential to 2.4. I guess it's not a really clear graph, but it's that rising exponential. And then the 12 ohm goes from 0.75, which is right around, well, there's half. 0.75 is right here. What do I have? What can I use? Blue. Okay. So, and it goes from 0.75 to 0. So I will just do a little, oops, not so nice. Essentially, I want to kind of match the time constants. You know, everything kind of reaches its same value with the same kinds of curvature. So you might have to do that. We don't know what time scale this is. That we would need a differential equation and all that, but we know these patterns are going to have these exponential curves going from one value to another, and you might have to graph that. So let me create a moment to allow you to copy this graph down. All right, so that's combination LR circuits. I mean, LC circuits. RC circuits. I'm thinking ahead to the next topic, uh, or two topics away. Combination RC circuits. You're only responsible for analyzing what happens at the very beginning where the capacitor acts like a wire and then analyzing what happens at the very end where the capacitor acts like a blockage. And so that means you have two combination circuits problems. Draw the whole circuit with a capacitor wire, solve all that, and then after a long time, draw the whole circuit again, any part where the capacitor gets a blockage, reanalyze the whole circuit, and then you have your solution. All right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next physics video.